Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. Takedown Media, our coverage of the sport continues today. Very special guest of the Nike Hot Seat today in Columbia, Missouri. We find the head coach of the Tigers, Brian Smith. Brian, good morning. How are you? Morning, Scott. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations on the 25 victory, uh, 25 to 11 victory over number seven ranked Cornell. Uh, perhaps uh, a bit of an upset there, but let's talk about the week. That was because this is one of those weeks where you know coaches that, that, that put together their schedule and they go, oh, we can do this, we can do this, and then the week hits. Can you describe last week for us? Uh, I remember when I put it together and I didn't want to have it. It was just we had to return these trips and nobody else had open dates. And when I put it together, I said we should probably fire the head coach. <laughs> so, uh, but going into it, I knew we had. Uh, I told my coaches we have to have the mindset that it's not going to be that bad. It, it was four duels in eight days in three different states and from Oklahoma to New York, you know, in Buffalo and Ithaca. And then we had to go over to Ypsilanti, Michigan, all in eight days. So it wasn't easy. We weren't in school. So the kids weren't missing school, but it was a, not an easy trip. But our guys competed well. We didn't have our best start to the trip by losing to Oklahoma, but then, you know, had to sit down and we had a little discussion as a team on doing the little things right, and it, it's it's starting to pick up. So we got three wins, three the last three wins at Buffalo, Ithaca, and uh, Eastern Michigan. So it ended on a high note. Coach, it's never easy to lose, but injuries are a part of what happens to a team, especially a very competitive team like the Tigers. Can you address the injuries and uh, perhaps give us a report there and, and even talk about the, the lineup changes that uh, have taken place because of injuries? Yeah, and probably my, you know, my 19 years of coaching at Mizzou, I probably haven't had this many injuries in all those years combined like we've had this year. I think we've had 11 or 12 sur surgeries this just this season. And uh, it's just, you know, not all starters, but just it's really depleted our room of a lot of workout partners and obviously some starters like Willie Miklas. So it's just been really difficult having, you know, it's the mental part of it when you see these guys off to the side and they're doing their rehab and riding their bikes or whatever they can do. And the rest of the team's on the mat. It's just trying to pick yourself up seeing a teammate that can't practice anymore. And so we've had to deal with the mental part of injuries, you know, being the person with the injury and the team that isn't injured but and getting through that. But, you know, Willie, Willie Miklas just had his surgery. He'll be ready for next season. And so we've replaced him with Matt Lamanowitz, who was technically our strength coach and was in his fifth year, decided not to wrestle and, and was going into strength training. And then we pulled him out of that because we had two or three guys get hurt at that same weight as, you know, 184 where Willie was. A couple other guys had season-ending injuries, so he's filled in. And he's done really great, great, a great job with, you know, how he's competing, getting wins for us. So we've had that. We've had a lineup change where... You know, John Ernesty was wrestling. He wrestled the first duel of the year at 33. Then Jaden Ironman came back, you know, and was healthy off of coming off of a small surgery and competed really good. But he just felt like he couldn't compete great at that weight with uh, cutting all the weight. He feels like he and I think it's the truth that if he's not cutting weight, he feels great. And uh, since we've moved Jaden Ironman up to 141, he's competed at a high level this weekend. He really shined and. Uh, look great, you know, and got a couple majors and a pin and is competing with a lot of energy. And John Ernesty at 133 is really going lights out. He placed fifth at the scuffle. He won his three matches this weekend, beating some good competition. And he just keeps stepping up for us. I know he's ranked somewhere up there in the country now. And so it's, you know, he's a sophomore. Jay Nyerman's a freshman. So we've you know, put in some young guys that are uh, wrestling at a high level. So it's kind of picked our team up. As excellent as we know Jaden Cox can be, uh, we're noticing perhaps that, and, and maybe this is the the right word, coach, or not the right word, but is he is he wrestling too cautiously? You know, what I see in practice is he's getting, getting after it, and I think when he gets out on the mat, these guys don't wrestle as much. He doesn't get shot on too much. So we've got to uh, get him to – he needs to take second and third attempts. And he's been starting to do it more and more. But I just noticed the thing about a couple of weeks ago where he's training at a high level, but in the competition and the travel, he was looking worn down. And so we had him 
take a rest this weekend. He did not come on this road trip. And I think it's paid off pretty good. I know I kept him back with uh, one of the coaches and he said he's been lifting and relaxing, but getting on the mat and just having fun. And uh, we needed that because he's traveled all over. He really hasn't had a season off. He went from his junior year into the Olympic season, right back into this season. And so having these couple weeks off were important to him where he wasn't really off. He's back home doing some training, but not as much on the mat and just not having to travel and cut the weight right now. I think he's going to come back and have a lot of, I know he is going to have a lot of energy the rest of the year. And I see, I think you'll see that offense. There's an awful lot of introspection by that young man, Jaden Cox. LaVon Mays is lighting things up for you as well, coach. I really like what I see out of this red shirt senior at 149 pounds. Yeah, he had a great weekend opening up on and getting his shots off and because he's so explosive and people try to just squeeze him and slow him down. And this weekend he was just blowing through people and getting his takedowns. Uh, I saw at the uh, in the Buffalo match, he rode the guy for two or three minutes, which he's really improved in his riding, but he needs to do it in the matches. And, I, I, you know, seeing what he did there and you know, getting after it. And, of course, like Cornell doing the same thing and then. Uh, the other day at Eastern Michigan, getting getting after it again. It just I like it because he has that ability, and we've been you know pushing him to get to that point where he feels that confidence to go and get extra takedowns and keep scoring in the match. And he's really starting to do it more and more. I see it in the practice room that we wrestling with Coach Johnston and some tough people in our room, and I've seen it. I've, you know all those times in the practice room. Now it's carrying over into the competition, which is great because he's a very talented young man. You told me years ago, lots of good things happen in the practice rooms, but we don't get wins in the practice room. And I remember right. that coach. I remember it so well. 22 to 12 win over EMU. That was a nice statement, but perhaps the best performance uh, by Missouri on the year so far, 25 to 11 over number seven, Cornell. Can you talk to us about taking the team on the road to, to battle Cornell University in Ithaca? It's fun for me because it's where I started coaching college. I was given that opportunity by Jack Spates, who was the head coach at Cornell. He, I was coaching a high school team in Fort Lauderdale, and he called me up and said, come be the restricted earnings coach. So Cornell and Ithaca, are uh, it, it is and will always be a special place to me. I got to meet the uh, president who's still there, who was there when I was there, Hunter, Roll uh, Hunter Rollins. Uh, there was you know Rob Cole, who... He's one of my closest friends in the coaching profession and a, just a dear friend. And then you had just a lot of people, the boosters and the alumni. I got to hang out with David Hirsch, who, you know, Rob and I coached to a national a title, which was technically our first national champion between the two of us. And David's just a special young man. Who's, you know, he's, I met his daughter, who's a freshman in high school now, so I felt really old then. But, uh, you know, he's uh, one of the top um, – oral surgeons for in Manhattan and he's just what he's done with his life is amazing but to go back there and meet all these people and what they the impact they had on my life is it's always exciting to me but then of course to go back and beat Cornell is even more special we did not see Gabe Dean in the lineup for uh for Cornell uh, I don't know what difference that would have made necessarily other than perhaps um, a, you know a score for for whoever it's just it's always interesting when we see no Jaden Cox and, and no uh, Gabe Dean, uh, two of the standout stars at the NCAA level. Uh, I'm sure both of them are preparing for that eventual trip to St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Coach, this is the time of year where you build the team up best you can to prepare for great matchups like OSU and Penn State. What are you doing specifically to get your team uh, jazzed up for these two uh, particular teams? Well, the great thing about this type of t this time of the season for us, that was our last road trip. So the only other time we have to travel is to the MAC championship. So we're home the rest of January and February, and even at the NCAA's, St. Louis is like home to us. So it's a really travel-wise a great end of the year. This last week or two is difficult, but I told the guys once you get to this, you're getting through the hard part, and then it's like downhill. And the other thing we, you know, one of the specific things we do is a lot of individual drills and practices with our starters. The focus goes on the 10. And it's not that we ignore our other 25 guys, but it's we, the focus goes on those 10 starters. There's a lot of film time, a lot of 
uh, individual drills, individual practices, and and uh, mental talks, and getting the guys and building them up, and letting them see the things that they do great, what they you know where where they've improved over the season, and where they continue to imp- uh, get better. And it's just I think it's a the biggest part of this type of the year is having them energized for practice, believing in themselves. And the you know which is the mental part. If they're mentally prepared to attack this end of the season and with uh, you know that just that ooh, that vigor in them that they want to get on that mat and uh, have fun with it. That then you have a good team at the end of the year. Some teams get worn down, and I think with this team, the excitement I saw on the bus coming home from a tough road trip that there's this is a younger team even though there's a couple seniors in it but they're excited about being home and we take on central michigan northern iowa oklahoma state we have a tough end of the year at home but they're excited about it and that's what i love to hear you know hear and see out of them nothing like being home in columbia missouri coach we always appreciate the time nike hot seat special guest today brian smith the head coach of the mighty tigers of mizzou the mac conference well, that championship will take care of itself, but something tells me the Tigers will be in contention yet again. Brian, thanks so much for the time today. Best to the Tigers. Thanks, Scott, and thanks for all you do for the score.